Our next approach that we're going to describe is a uh, lateral approach to the proximal humerus, sort of a limited approach. The, the key component of this in, in uh, fracture surgery is that you're going to modify the location of the incision a little bit based upon the area of the fracture that you might be addressing. Uh, this approach is limited. Uh, here's our anatomy with the coracoid process. Uh, in our patient here, it's a little hard to feel it as a chromium, but I am assessing it approximately here with the uh, acromioclavicular joint being approximately here. And then we're going to make an incision directly laterally limited to uh, a five centimeter length to try and protect our axillary nerve. Uh, but if we're addressing uh, the most common fracture that we might be addressing here would be a, a greater tuberosity. A lot of times you'll see on your preoperative film, films or sometimes even a CT scan that the fragment's more posteriorly. And you can make this incision more posteriorly, but you still are, are limited to that uh, five centimeters. Um, and just like that other, um, uh, the delta pectoral approach, sometimes you make that approach just enough to get a close reduce, a uh, shoulder dislocation, and then you're going to have to address your proximal humerus fracture, which you might do... Uh, through open means or closed percutaneous means. This, this is commonly done in conjunction with other uh, closed treatment. So we're going to go ahead and just imagine that our, our fragment is relatively due lateral. Going off, going off the edge of the acromion. And I haven't totally confirmed the edge, so I'm going to come up a little bit just to identify the edge of the acromion. Skin incision does not have to be limited, but the split in the deltoid does. So I'm going to go a little past. I pick that spot, the split, and I'll come down here. And now I can absolutely identify the acromion right here. And so I want to limit that to about five centimeters, which is going to take me to about the edge of my skin incision here. So we're picking this spot to go through and stay in line with the fibers all the way up to the acromion. And then I tend to like to do this mostly bluntly so as to keep in line with the fibers. And then we'll come down on basically our rotator cuff and uh, what will usually amount to be our fracture if we've appropriately, preoperatively planned. And so I'm going to stop right here. And again, so I'm going to bluntly get these deltoid fibers off and you'll run into uh, a bursa frequently. Again, I'm taking this right to the edge. And what's underlying all this is our rotator cuff. And now you can see that I can easily get under the acromion. And right here is my acromion. And a lot of times I'll try and put my finger in there to loosen things up. I can go this way as far as I want if I'm on bone, but I don't want to split the deltoid through that. I don't want to, and here, as I said, I've given myself the five centimeters because now that I'm stretching it, I have my five centimeters. When I had the stitch in, I probably put it in at about four. And then here, I'm going to usually dissect down on the proximal humerus, trying to find and clean off my fracture edge. And then once, once that's obtained, let me get another stitch too. We can, uh, we can play with the rotation of the arm and externally rotate it to show more of the lesser tuberosity. And sometimes the junction between the greater tuberosity fragment and see that that's palpate here to see that it's not displaced up. And we can sometimes palpate it in the back. And again, if your fragment's more posterior, you want to start off with your incision a more, little more posterior. And then sometimes I'll put a stitch through the cuff here with a big, bigger stitch that I'm maybe going to even repair that down with and it allows me to pull on that fragment and reduce it. And a lot of times I can uh, put a retractor right here enough to put a, a drill hole a drill hole 
in the intact shaft portion uh, or a suture anchor uh, to, to tack down the, the suture repair with a much heftier suture than this for the tuberosity fragment. In regards to using this sort of approach for uh, IM nailing and starting of a portal, I will tell you that I am generally use a much more, uh, much smaller incision for uh, my I am nailing, but if I uh, uh, subscribe to the thought of being extra careful to the rotator cuff, this is a perfect approach for um, maybe a little less so, maybe this much of an incision to be able to see your uh, rotator cuff, clean off the deltoid, and then you can just take a knife and split. Split your uh, rotator cuff right on top of where you want to make your uh, I'm nail starting point. At this point, I probably would put a guide pin to confirm that I was splitting right exactly where I wanted to center center uh, on the on the image, and then you can split the rotator cuff. And after splitting it and doing your work, you can work with uh, some Sen retractors on both halves of the rotator cuff to protect it during all the reaming and insertion. So you can put in Sens here and here at your starting point, do your reaming, put in your nail, and when you're done, you have a clean cut that you can suture back and repair. And that's uh, very useful for that as well.